I don't bounce, by the way. I'm ready. Ready to bounce. <clears throat> Good evening. <coughs> Praise God. Hola. So, <coughs> I want to share with you something that the Lord gave me on Monday. I was uh, I was talking to a friend that I have in the Philippines, and uh, she was like, "So, what have you been up to?" I'm like, "Yeah, you know, just here, going to work, coming home, going to church, and whatnot." And, uh, just sharing the messages that the Lord gives me. <coughs> and uh, she's like, yeah, I've read the ones that you have put here on Facebook and all that. I said, yes, yeah, so I'm just waiting for him to give me the next one. And I was watching a TV show, and something happened in the show, and I said, hold on, because he just gave it to me. I got to go. <coughs> and I started writing. So I'm watching this, this TV show, uh, that this specific episode, it was about a guy that was uh, about to be uh, executed because of a crime he committed. So the president and his staff were trying to come up with a way on how to vacate the execution. <clears throat> so throughout the episode, uh, one of the, the members of the staff is Jewish, so he's in temple and his rabbi is talking to him and all that. Then someone comes into, into the White House and uh, turns out this person's Quaker and all that. And then the president, this Irish Catholic, is also a priest. So <clears throat> he's uh, speaking with the priest in the Oval Office. And uh, you know, during the conversation, uh, he tells the priest, you know, I, I, I really looked for a way out. find it. And then the priest says, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. You know what that means? God is the only one who gets to kill people. That was your way out. Did you pray? It's like, yeah, I did. I prayed. I prayed for wisdom. And none came, said the priest, and he's like, it never has. And I'm a little mad about that. So that got me thinking about James 1, verses 5 and 6. You know, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given to him. You know, so you got to believe it. <clears throat> and uh, so then the priest says, you know, you remind me of this guy that used to live by the river. He had a radio report that the river was going to come down and flood the town, so all the residents were supposed to evacuate their homes. But then the man said, I'm religious. I pray. God loves me, God will save me. So the waters rose, then a man in a rowboat sh uh, showed up and shouted, hey, the town is flooding, let me take you to safety. And the guy said back, I'm religious, I pray, God loves me, God will save me. So then a helicopter was hovering over the area and saw the guy and they shouted through a megaphone, hey, the town's flooding, let us take you to safety. So he shouted back, I'm religious, I pray, God loves me, God will save me. But then he drowned. So when he got to heaven, I demand an audience with God. So he's standing in front of God, and he, he asked God, God, why did this happen? I'm a religious man, I pray, I thought you loved me. And God told him, I sent you a radio report a helicopter and a rowboat. What are you doing here? You know? <clears throat> so then after the priest finishes the story, he tells the president, he sent you a priest, a rabbi, and a Quaker. What more do you want from him? <laughs> you know, that got me thinking sometimes, and, and this is going back to what you were talking about, Pastor, two weeks ago. We want to hear something from God, literally through our senses, mm -hmm. and we need to learn how to, uh, how to discern when he's talking to us. You know, we, we're expecting this resounding voice 
that we're going to hear, kind of like what happens when Jesus came out of the water after he was baptized. You know, this is my only son, which I am well pleased. We can probably hear that, but we need to understand that he uses our own voices to tell us yeah. what he wants us to, to, uh, to understand of him. But he also talks to us through other people. And we need to be able to understand that so that we can learn to listen to him more and more clearly every time he's trying to tell us something. And then I want to finish with this that I read also online. It says, when you find yourself in the position to help someone, be happy and feel blessed because God is answering that person's prayer through you. Yeah. Remember, our purpose on earth is not to get lost in the dark, but to be a light to others so that they may find a way to us. what I wanted to share today. Anyone has any testimony or prayer request? James. You know, James, <coughs> excuse me, James chapter 5, James, no pun intended, uh, speaks about that, and let me look it up. It says, verse 16, therefore confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. You know, you say you prayed for your friend. Well, just rest assured that it is working because we are righteous people. That's right. So, anyone else? Mike. Yeah, we had uh, the worship team was. Uh, Thank you. 
I've been saying that for a long time. thank the Lord for getting us together, you know, on this wonderful day. Father, we thank you because we are here and we know that you are present in this room right now. We thank you, Father, because every time that we call you, you come. You are always within us, between us, among us, Lord. You're always watching over us, over all of those that we pray for, those that are close to us, everyone in this world, Lord. You're watching over them right now. We know, Father, that you are calling unto your children right now for them to come to you because you have a plan for each and every one of us. You want to reveal yourself to every person on this planet, Lord, that they know you. You already sent your only son once to die for us, to get us closer to God. listen to your word, to continue to have revelation, Father, through your word, and that we can also show others who you are, Father. We know that you shine through us, Lord. We know that you work through us to help other people, and you have other people come to you as well, Lord. Thank you, Father, for all of your blessings and
Announcements, September 12th, not this Friday, but the one after, Eastern Gatehouse Prayer. Come, 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 because this is a wonderful time. Speak the word. Will you not revive us again that your people may rejoice in you? Thank you Lord. I am a believer, and these signs do follow me. In the name of Jesus, I cast out demons, I speak in new tongues, I lay hands on the sick, and they do recover. Thank you, Lord. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Therefore, I forbid any sickness or disease to come upon this body. Every disease, germ, and every virus that touches this body dies instantly in the name of Jesus. Every organ and every tissue of this body functions to the perfection which God created it to function. I forbid a malfunction in this body in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. I receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him, the eyes of my understanding being enlightened. And I am not conformed to this world, but am transformed by the renewing of my mind. My mind is renewed by the word of God. The Lord rebuked the devourer for my sake, and no weapon that is formed against my finances will prosper. All obstacles and hindrances to my financial prosperity are now resolved. The Lord has pleasure in the prosperity of his servants, and Abraham's blessings are mine. John, would you take the offering, please? worship. Let your river flow, Lord Jesus. Let your river flow.
tonight that nothing is impossible with you, Lord. Whatever the needs are that are here, represented by people that are here, they are more than abundantly met because of your glory. Hallelujah. And the power that works in us, that Holy Spirit of Christ, we bless you tonight, Lord. We celebrate the victory, Lord, over every situation, every circumstance every attack of the enemy, Lord. We declare the victory. We celebrate it now in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, worship team, Mike. We appreciate it. As always, amen. It's like a, like a huge amen. Mass choir, hallelujah. Amen. It's, it's excellent. Praise God. Just no telling what the Holy Ghost is doing and will do. Praise God. Through this group of believers. Praise the Lord. 
Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Somebody said, you know, silence. Silence is golden, and example is the best teacher. So is a silent example a golden teacher? Or is a silent teacher a golden example? Praise the Lord. <laughs> so I'm torn between not saying another word <laughs> or just rolling the dice and see what happens. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I was, uh, last time I was at the hospital visiting, I saw this, uh, I noticed it's like all these nurses, everyone that I saw had this little apple pen. And I, I kept watching, thinking, well, maybe it's just, you know, a couple of them. It's a, like a fraternity thing or a sorority deal or some kind. But I noticed over and over and over. And finally, I asked before I left, I asked this nurse at the desk, I said, what, what's the meaning of that apple pen? And she said, oh, it doesn't mean anything. It just keeps the doctors away. <laughs> so you just never know what you're... <laughs> An apple a day. Praise the Lord. Thank the Lord. Amen. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to be uh, brief tonight, and uh, I really want to uh, kind of move into some things for Sunday. But it's just basically a continuation of what we've been talking about, what Roberto was talking about here tonight, and how uh, the re focusing, you know, uh, of us as, as spirits rather than mere mortals, you know, and uh, how God, I really believe, wants to use that uh, to bring a, a genuine revival for each one of us as well as collectively and how we can impact others. The worship team, uh, us as a church, uh, wherever we are, you know, we can bring, we can bring that revival if we'll operate uh, as spirits. No matter how good we are as people, we still are flawed. You know, we still have failings, and, and, uh, and it's painfully obvious to ourselves and to others. But if we operate by the Spirit of God, nothing is impossible, literally. Any, God can do anything, and he will. So let's, let's just begin uh, with Romans chapter 7, uh, verse 22. I have, a, again, a lot of scriptures tonight, but, but really I, I, it, we can move through them fairly rapidly, I think, and, and kind of set things up a little bit for Sunday. Because, you know, in the time that Jesus came in the flesh, man was totally dominated by sense knowledge. And I'm talking about even the religious world, because they had no spirit, they had to operate by the law, and so they had no, and it was obvious because when Jesus showed up, they didn't recognize him. I mean, they had no discernment whatsoever. It was just strictly uh, what I see is what I get kind of thing. So let's look at this. Uh, this is Paul, and he says, For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. Now that's the spirit that he's talking about. So We've heard this many times. I remember Darlene saying this when we were over on the south side. Most of us have heard this over and over, but it doesn't hurt to repeat it because man is a spirit, and we possess a body, a physical body, right? That's what we live in. And then we have a soul that's, that's made up of our reasoning faculties. Now, our body makes it possible for us to contact the physical world, the phys things that are natural in this world. And our soul or our reasoning faculties contact mental things, thoughts, ideas, you know, interactions with others, and so on and so forth. And our spirits contact spiritual things. Praise the Lord. Our spirit is what was recreated in the new birth when we were born again. And it was recreated in the image or after the likeness of God who is a spirit. 
Now, there's a reason for that, not just so that we can go to heaven, but so that we can operate as God in this earth. But the only way we can do that is by being led by the Spirit, which means we have to overcome the other two parts of our body. Amen? Our reasoning faculties and our physical contact. If you think about it, every time you've had a, an encounter with God, whether it was a dream, a vision, an epiphany, whatever you want to call it, a, just a knowing in the spirit, there was a sense of detachment from the other two. I mean, you don't try to figure it out with your reasoning because it, it doesn't work. The more you think about it, the less real it seems, right? And the more you try to make sense out of it in a physical sense, uh, the less of a reality it, it, it has a tendency to, to seem, right? So we're talking about the inward man or the spirit is who God is dealing with and how we need to operate. Okay, look, look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 16. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, and this is the, the perfect kind of definition of what I'm talking about or the, the explanation of the difference in these, though the outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day, which then kind of substantiates what I'm saying about the inward man being the spirit, and obviously the outward man is the natural, physical, and uh, mental person, right? So the outward, or the visible man, is the one that we recognize in the mirror, or when we see him on the street, right? The spiritual things are unveiled to the inward man, not to the outward man. Amen? Because that's where the Holy Spirit resides. So he reveals it, the Holy Spirit reveals it to our spirit. He's not revealing it to our senses so much. In fact, not at all. With rare exceptions. And as uh, Roberto said, uh, look, under the, under the Old Covenant, God had to use physical contact and visual sights and sounds because there's no other way for them to receive it. And so even today, you know, when people, we're supposed to, what Paul said was preach the word, not experiences. We can talk about them, we can share them, but I've listened, I, I've seen uh, many, many times when the entire sermon was just experiences. I had this, I experienced that, God said this, God did this. I, I, you know, that's it's not bad it's just not biblical he said preach the word praise the lord so they we, we need to recognize that god deals with us through our spirit now to a unbeliever he may have to give now i'm not saying he st he doesn't still do that but i'm saying we, we we spend a lot of time seeking that and we're missing the screams of the Holy Spirit that's going on all the time, which is exactly the premise uh, from which Roberto was speaking uh, this evening. You don't develop discernment by always needing an external, you know, affirmation or, or confirmation or apparition or whatever it might be, right? Now, the very, the very idea that we look for those tells us one thing. We're carnally minded. Carnally minded isn't necessarily evil. It's just natural. It's just not operating to the level. That, see, God wants us to, have the, to grow up into the full stature of Jesus. That isn't a height or a weight or a dimension naturally. It is a spiritual position where you're led by the Spirit, where you only do what the Spirit says, only you know, say what the Spirit says, do what the, the Spirit does, to where you're totally identified with God as your Father. Jesus never called God anything other than Father except on the cross when he was separated from him through the, 
through the bearing of our sins. And he, then he says, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? So th that's number one. Romans chapter 6, uh, verses 4 through 8. Let's look at this. I don't mean it's number one that I have a bunch that a list that I'm going down a list here, but I just meant that that's, pri that's a priority that we have to have uh, to understand how God is going to deal with us. And, you know, I think one, we went through a phase here where God had given me uh, an interpretation of this dream uh, or gave me a dream and then gave me the interpretation of the dream for somebody I'd never known before, never met before. In fact, it was Sheila that introduced me. I've talked about it before. I'm not going to go into all that. As a result of that, I have people coming, you know, with dreams all the time, and that's fine. But the truth is we can all do this, you know. It was This was, I think, more of a specific thing that God was trying to show this one individual. And at the same time, he was trying to teach me something, that sometimes he's got to knock us out to, for the Spirit to, to, to deal with us. It's like the Dooley, Arkansas thing, you know, I, I mean, I had to, I, I was a sound asleep, and I just woke up and said, you know, it's Dooley, Arkansas. And, of course, there is no Dooley, Arkansas until I finally get there and find out, yeah, there is one. It's just not on any maps. And so, I mean, that was a God thing. But, but God had to get past even my subconscious to speak to me. And that's what I think, you know, he wants to do that with all of us, and that's just an idea, not that I'm, you know, certainly not any more spiritual than anybody else, maybe even denser, because I've got to tell you, that was right about the same time that I was going everywhere trying to hear something from God from somebody else's experience or something that somebody else had done, thinking that this is the avenue to take, you know, I mean, it's what you kind of hear being preached, you know, and God was trying to just totally change the way that I was thinking, the way that I was approaching him, you know, and I think you know, God doesn't just do that for one person or, or, you know, he doesn't have some weird kind of whacked out way to do something with me. And then it's altogether different for everybody else. You know, he approaches us as individuals, but the methods that God uses are the same. I mean, for everybody, you know what I mean? He'll just, he'll put your spin on it for you to be able to connect, you know what I mean? So anyway, therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in newness of life. That's spirit walk. Okay, that's not talking about walking as a really good person now or a much nicer or better or less, you know, whatever. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Well, how was he resurrected? Spirit. Yes, he had a body, but it's a spirit body that he's got now. And it's, it's, they're not the same. It's not flesh and blood or flesh and bone. It's uh, flesh and blood, I think is, uh, am I right? Anyway, it's not flesh and flesh and blood. I don't. It's different. It's a different body. It's a spiritual body. Trust me. Amen. Uh, okay, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Spirit realm. Now, we're still in the natural realm, but we, we now actually live from the spirit realm, which is where Jesus operates from. Right? All right, so uh, the outward or the visible man is the one that we, obviously, we recognize, right? But man is a spirit. That's the nature of God. Amen? And it's so that that nature of God, because we are spirits, we can live independent of the body. Literally, that's what he's telling us here. Uh, they used to call it astral traveling. Maybe they still call it that. It's new age movements and so forth. 
I, I did that a couple of times. I had a little stimulant, I had a little help, pharmaceutically speaking. <laughs> and uh, I knew, I know one time, me and another guy, we got so out of the body that he flew up into a, a high, some high power lines. Now you think that's impossible. But I had to fly up there and get him down. <laughs> That's an old song, but uh, yeah. never mind. Praise the Lord. <laughs> but I'm saying, spirit, born again believers can operate separate from the body. What I mean by that is we don't have to be influenced by the senses. That's what he's literally saying here in this portion of Scripture. Amen? This recreated spirit of man becomes, the Scripture says, Jehovah's lamp that he uses to guide us. Right? The Holy Spirit leads us, but he doesn't lead us by our senses. He leads us by our spirit. Look at Pro, let's look at Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 27. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord searching all the inward parts of the belly. That's the spirit. Right? Out of your belly will flow rivers. We know that's, that's the spirit, right? So the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord searching all spiritual things, the way the spirit operates. The other place he talks about the lamp, uh, you know, all right, let's look. This lamp, this light is the recreated spirit. Right? And it's what God uses to lead us into realms that are otherwise hidden to us. He's brought us out of darkness into his marvelous light. The spirit illuminates. It leads us into things that have been hidden from man forever, for, for, since man's been here. It's been hidden from us personally. But he says he can lead us and, and guide us and teach us all things. All things is stuff that nobody else has seen. They've only seen some things. But we can see all things by the Spirit of God. Amen. And He does it through our spirit. You've got to believe that. Because He'll put you in situations that just don't, by the natural, don't look like they're going anywhere. Like it's just chaotic. But as Mike said tonight, when you say this to somebody who's not a believer, they think, well, that, they're just guessing. They're just, look, the Spirit agrees witnesses with our spirit and we may not get it instantaneously but we know something's going on here in the spirit and we're and if we begin to focus on that from the spirit perspective rest in him he begins to illuminate he begins to open our spiritual eyes to what's going on mm -hmm. and eventually it will manifest in our natural thinking but we can't start there because you can't figure spiritual things out with the natural mind it's, it's at odds with God. It's at odds with the Spirit. Most of the time, when the Spirit leads us, it looks idiotic or, or wrong or, you know, just, just impossible to the natural mind. Because it takes faith to operate in the Spirit realm. It doesn't take any faith to operate in the natural realm, other than just the natural faith in what you can do yourself or what can be done through physical means. Amen? So... Praise the Lord. This is, uh, there is so much that God wants to reveal to us over and over. Jesus said, I want to talk to you about spiritual things. Uh, that's what I'm going to talk to you about Sunday, uh, how he was trying to impart spiritual truth to people who just wouldn't get it. They kept wanting natural stuff. 
And he's trying to show them that the natural stuff only comes as a result of the spiritual. You know, you can't, we, we, we spend a lot of time praying about financial increase and blessing and break. There's nothing wrong with that, but I'm saying that never, it doesn't happen from the outside in. It happens from the inside out. It happens by the Spirit. Praise the Lord. All right, let's look at this. Uh, John chapter 10, verse 10. John 10, verse 10. The thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Now that's not just living a long time. He's talking about eternal life. He's talking about God life, supernatural life, eternal life. Amen? God life is abundant life. It's, it's the creative life, the life of God the creative ability of God in us that produces abundance, overflow, uh, more than enough. You know, all, all of those uh, adjectives, praise the Lord. It's God imparting his nature to our spirits, recreating them. That's how we're born again. Praise the Lord. <laughs> That's how it happens. God imparts his nature to our spirit, and it's recreated. Now it's like God. The, the natural human spirit is dead to God. It's separated from God. It has no creative ability. The only spiritual contact it can have is demonic. So God recreates us by imparting his nature to our spirit. Otherwise, we had the nature of the God of this world. Adamic nature. Now we have the last Adam. The God nature. We need to operate from that. From that place. Amen. From that reality. Amen. Real Christianity is the intrusion of the nature of God into man. That's Christianity. The rest of the stuff is religion. But what real Christianity is, is God intrudes into man. And I don't mean that he breaks the door down because we invite him in, right? But he comes in and recreates us. It's, it's that intrusion or that Infusion, maybe is a better word, of God into man, recreating him. That's what Christianity is. That's all it was ever supposed to be. A new creation. A new kingdom. A God kingdom. And we've made it everything else. We've, we've turned it into a philosophy. We, we, we've, you know, we've made it a rule-keeping thing. We've made it like every religion that's ever existed. And because of that, people have no more uh, hunger for Christianity than they do any other religion. In fact, if you're operating from that perspective, you might prefer the, the Islam or, or even within, quote, unquote, Christianity, you might go more for the, uh, uh, the uh, say, the Dutch, the Mennonites, the, you know, because there's demands and you got to toe the line and, you know, it makes sense that you ought to get more reward because you're really working hard and you're doing all this stuff. But it's all bogus. All right, look, okay, back up here on John, uh, uh, excuse me, John 16, verses 13 through 15. And we see what, he's, what Jesus is dealing with in this infusion of God, this Christianity that we call it. Because you don't see Christianity anywhere in the Bible. I mean, it doesn't say anything, Christianity. That's just something we, Christ, you know. But he didn't come to create Christianity. He came to create heirs 
and joint heirs. He came to create children of God. Amen. So how be it when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me. Now this is the key phrase here. For he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. So he's going to make spiritual things as real to our spirits as physical things are real to our senses. That's what the Holy Spirit's going to do. That's what he's telling us. Praise the Lord. He's going to glorify him by making these spiritual realities realities to us. Look at, uh, let's look at um, verse number 14. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and show it to you. Now, God is a spirit. So he's going to take from that spirit truth, which is all truth, complete truth, t uh, absolute truth, and he's going to give it to you. He's going to show it to you. How's he going to do that? By the Spirit. It's the only way you can learn it. It's the only way you can receive it. This is what born again is about. This, our spirit was recreated so that we can know the things of God. And it's not enough to know them, but if we know them, we can operate in them. That's why Jesus says, you will lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. You'll cast out demons. You'll speak with new tongues. You'll, you'll take deadly things. It won't hurt you. Praise the Lord. That's, that's what he's talking about. Amen? All right, look, let's go now to Proverbs again, uh, if you will, chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. See, trust in the Lord with all thine heart, that's spirit. Those are synonymous terms. Whatever this uses heart, he's, he's not talking about a blood pump here. He's talking about the spirit. Trust in the Lord with all your spirit. And lean not to your own understanding. Don't lean to your senses or your soul, soulish way of operating, right? But in all thy ways, acknowledge him. Acknowledge the spirit. Acknowledge the truth. And he shall direct your path, with, which is a uh, you know, companion scripture to what we just read. Uh, amen? Mm -hmm. So if you have, if you have a, a, a need, right? Say you have a, a, a financial need. Well, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean to your own natural way of seeing things and feeling about things. But acknowledge him, and he'll direct your path. How do you do that? Well, you'd go to Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. But my God will supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And our spirit rejoices. Yeah. Our spirit knows that. Our spirit identifies with that immediately. Uh -huh. Praise the Lord. But by, by, by declaring that, we're bringing something that is a spiritual truth to the natural realm. It's to renew our mind. Right. It's to bring this body of sensory operation into submission to the Spirit. Sure. That's the reason for quoting Scripture. Because it agrees completely with our spirit. Okay. Praise the Lord. All right, look at Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20. Yeah, baby. Now, unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all, we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. There's no limits, whatever it is, right? John chapter 1 and verse 16. And of his fullness have all we received, and grace upon grace. Praise God. There's no, in other words, there is absolutely no limits to the spirit man. It's limitless. 
The potential is unknown. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 12 through 14. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Are these scriptures starting to make uh, more sense in context of what we're talking about? Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Yes, yes. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. That's why when you're talking to an unbeliever about stuff like this, it's like speaking a foreign language. Because they're spiritually discerned and they make total sense to us, but to nobody else. Even Christians that operate from the sense realm. I mean, I, I know people that I know they're born again. I know that they're, they're not going to hell, but they have no clue when you talk about this. They, look, they think you're crazy because they're carnal Christians. They're carnally minded. And such were some of you, praise the Lord. Such were we. Sometimes we are. But that's, that's the leading of the Holy Ghost now is to get us into who we really are and operate from that identity, from that spiritual reality, so that we can have these all things and operate in all the power of God. Amen. That's what he recreated us for. Yeah. Amen? Praise the Lord. So this, uh, let's, let's look at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3 now, verses 1 through 4. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual. Now, Paul's talking to Christians, brethren. Uh -huh. But he says, I can't talk to you about spiritual things. Or, I can't talk to you on a spiritual level. But I have to talk to you in the natural. In other words, I have to appeal to your senses and your, your, your sensory faculties. Amen. Even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto ye were unable to bear it. Neither yet now are you able. Now that's a huge percentage of the church, of the body of Christ. Hasn't changed, right? Uh, verses 3 and 4. For ye, are not, for ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envy, strife, divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? In other words, you're operating totally from external, you know, Sensors are out, we used to say. You know, you talk to somebody and you can see they're, they're in a snit, as they used to say. You know, they're, they just got a, they're just angry, you know. And you say, whoa, you know, no matter what you say, it's like they're offended. Their sensors are out, you know. They're just totally sensory. They're totally carnal. They're totally operating from the sense realm. That's what Paul was basically saying here. Your sensors are out all the time. How about tuning it down a little bit? For while one saith, I'm of Paul, another, I'm of Apollos, are ye not, not carnal? You're looking to ministries or men instead of to the Spirit of God. You're being led by other people's experiences instead of God, instead of by your own uh, interaction, spirit to spirit with the Holy Ghost. Amen? So this recreated man is still being led by their senses. That's the point. They're dominated by their physical body. Now, you can take this further, you know, I, I, I can extrapolate on this. I'm not going to go off into a whole lot of it. But the idea of any division within the body of Christ was never the intent of God. The very fact that we have all these denominations is proof positive that the church has been a carnal church. And even within denominations, and even within churches, buildings, and, and groups. Because nothing about God is divisive. Amen? It should unite us. If I don't agree, I just agree to disagree. You know, I'm just not going to fuss about it. it. It brings nothing to God. It, it does nothing to glorify God. So it cannot be of God. But it shows you 
the reason why we operate on individual levels as carnal Christians is because we're taught that way by the, by the organizations, by the entire what we call the body of Christ. And it's been this way from the first century on. Because Paul's dealing with it right there. Amen? Praise God. So here they, they, they're being led by their senses. They're being dominated by their physical body. And yet the scripture tells us that this new creation, this spirit man is to be led by the spirit, is to walk by faith. So you can see why when you preach these things, there's, it's like a dichotomy. It's like a, a, a contradiction. On the one hand, we're saying, you know, walk in the Spirit, be led by the Spirit, walk by faith. And on the other hand, we're creating all of these reasons to operate from your senses all the time. And wonder why we don't move forward, why we don't get beyond, you know, you know basic kind of what we've called revivals or really more like awakenings or, or momentary awareness. But they always fade. And we fall right back into the same old junk. Yep. Praise the Lord. We're spirit beings. God deals with us through our spirit. He does not deal with us through the flesh. The enemy comes and brings sickness and disease and torment and you know nervous depression and all the rest. That's sensory. That's all external. God does not come to us that way. He comes to us through the spirit. And if from the Spirit, we understand that we can then dominate the flesh. That's how you get people healed. You don't, you know, here's where we, another th thing that, that I've discovered. We're, we're praying for people without ever dealing with their spirit. And whatever is troubling them started in the Spirit. We're trying to fix the outside. And there's an internal issue going on. They need to know how much God loves them. They need to know spiritual truth before we can start, you know. You need to shore up the framework before you start painting the barn. Or you'll just have a nice paint job laying in the middle of the backyard. Right? I mean, we're, 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 doing, we're doing things backwards. We're coming from the outside in when we should be coming from the inside out. God did not recreate us from the outside in. Right. He came directly to the spirit of man, recreates the spirit of man, and from that we can then walk in divine health. We can prosper. We can Our relationship can be restored. You understand what I mean? But it all, has to, it all comes from the inside out. So when we go to minister to people, we have a tendency to minister from the outside in and then wonder why we don't get the kind of results that Jesus got. Jesus spoke to the spirit of the individual. Yes, Tammy. Doesn't it sometimes happen from the outside in? You get Well, yeah, I mean, the miraculous is not for us. I mean, in terms of, you know, you, you know a lot of that stuff is not for us. We're, we're to walk by faith. But it can be for the unbeliever. But I'm talking about, I'm more... Uh, directly speaking to the church or to the body of Christ. Look, there's a lot of cripples yeah. in the church. Yeah. A lot of blind, a lot of lame, a lot of deep, a lot of mute. I mean, I, I wish it were other than that, but I'd be lying if I said it, and, and we all know it. So, we're, you know, we're, how, physician, heal thyself. Mm -hmm. I mean, how are we gonna, how, that's what the world thinks, you know. How do, how do we bring healing to them when, when we're all screwed up? Just something to think about. Praise the Lord. Anyway, God deals with us spirit to spirit. Now, again, I'm going to get into this more Sunday, but that, Jesus talks about it all the time. Nobody comes to the Father through natural means. The spirit has to draw. Them. All right, Hebrews chapter 10, uh, verse 38. And that's the irony of this. Paul says, and we always, you know, we are, we've related this recently, at least, to, to just to grace. But it's about the Spirit. He says, you know, oh foolish Galatians, what's with you now that you're operating by your sense realm? 
did you receive the Spirit through the natural man? He's trying to tell, he's trying to teach him what we're talking about right here. That this is not an external thing, this is an internal thing. The external will take care of itself. It's, it's no different than he says, he, 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 if you seek first the kingdom of God, in other words, if you seek the spirit realm, all these things, all these sense realm things will be added to you. But if you're looking to get the sense realm stuff before you are tuned into the spirit, you're going to miss it. Because the Spirit is going to lead you and guide you, give you wisdom to make the right decisions, to be in the right place at the right time, to direct your steps. You know what I mean? You, a lot of times this stuff happens, and we don't know what happened until after the fact. Right. We're thinking, I don't know, how, 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 how did I get there? How did, how did, how did, how did, how did I, you know? I mean, what, what was I doing? Uh -huh. you, then you just realize that was a God thing. Yeah. He was directing our steps even in our ignorance, na naturally speaking. Yeah. Praise the Lord. So, but wouldn't it, how, how cool would it be if we could begin to discern and cooperate with the Spirit rather than having to be drug, we could actually be led. Okay, so now the just shall live by faith. Or the, those that are justified, those that have been recreated in the image of God, the righteousness of God in Christ, they're going to live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Now, draw back from what? From walking in the Spirit by faith. Amen? Draw back into sense knowledge walking. Walking by your senses. Walking by what you can see, smell, taste, touch, and feel. If you're a recreated spirit, you should live in the realm of the spirit. Amen? Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So you live by the word. Doesn't mean you got to be quoting the word. Doesn't mean you have to have it totally memorized front to back. But you live in agreement with what the word says. By his stripes you're healed. What you set your hand to prospers. He will direct your steps. Amen? All things will work together for good. Amen? There are no accidents for people who walk in the spirit. Amen? Praise the Lord. So that's how. The human mind and body begin to lose their dominance and the spirit begins to take over. That's what he calls renewing your mind. But your body only does what your mind tells it to do. And if your spirit gains dominance over your mind, you've won the battle. And the only way you can do it is through agreement with that word. And believing what God says about you. That's operating from that spirit dimension. And then, because that spirit dimension is heaven, it's the kingdom of God, then you can literally take heaven wherever you go. Yes. You can yes. bring heaven to earth. Mm -hmm. As it is in heaven, so is it here. What is it in heaven? No lack, no sickness, mm -hmm. no disease, no poverty, no broken relationships always victorious always in the presence of God always aware you know totally functioning from the spirit amen what happens blind eyes open now Jesus did this stuff in the natural but everything he did was a reflection of spiritual truth he said that you got eyes but you don't see right so what happens when we do this? The spiritual blinders come off. And all of a sudden we start seeing in the spirit. The lame begin to walk. Those who could not walk in faith, who could not be led by the spirit, all of a sudden they get up off of their religious mat and they start walking by faith. They start walking in the spirit. 
Amen. The mute. Those who couldn't speak, all of a sudden, their voice becomes the voice of God. We start declaring and, 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 and uh, expressing the very mind of God. The very, that's what Jesus did. That's what, I've already said it here a couple of times tonight. But he said, I only say what I hear my father say. In other words, I'm only saying what the Spirit's saying. Praise God. All right, let's wrap up here with about three more scriptures real quick. Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. What is that? The Spirit. Revealing Him. Amen. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 10. Perfect will of God is healing, deliverance. I mean, you know what the perfect will of God is? Just look at heaven. And have put on the new man which is renewed in the knowledge after the image of him that created him. Amen? He's not talking about earthly knowledge. He's talking about the same kind of knowledge that your spirit has. The recreated spirit. Amen. Philippians chapter 2, verse 13. We'll end with this. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. That literally is God enabling you with his ability to operate as God. I mean, after all, that's exactly what the scripture tells us. We are Jesus in this world. The problem is we are a deep, dumb, blind, and crippled Jesus. Right? And the only reason is because we're not operating by the Spirit the way he did. Our spirits are perfect. They are absolutely perfect. They are absolutely like Jesus. So all we have to do is look around to say, we're not operating like Jesus. We're operating still, I would, I would say, 80 to 90% flesh. Not evil, not vicious, mean, bad, just carnal. Just not in tune with the spirit. You know, the human mind, I think they say the human the average person uses 10% or less of their brain. I would venture to say it's about the same for the spirit. You've got people like Einstein and others who use maybe 20%, 25% max. And they're creating whole new theories of relativity and splitting atoms and getting closer to God the mind of God, even though they may not know it. Imagine what we could do if we grew up into the full stature of Jesus, 100% operating in the Spirit. And it's possible, or, or he wouldn't have told us to do it. But you have to change. Religion can't be the driving force. Christianity, quote unquote, cannot be the driving force. It has to be this recreated spirit, this inward man that is totally in tune with God, that is one with the Holy Spirit, which is the Spirit of God. Praise the Lord. That's our challenge. That's what the Holy Spirit is challenging us. Because God wants to be glorified. And it can't be glorified by human flesh. It has to happen by His Spirit dominating our recreated spirit. Amen? Amen? Let that be the challenge. Amen? God's never had a challenge that he couldn't overcome. And he that's in you is greater than he that's in the world. Amen? Give him a hand clap tonight. Praise God. Thank the Lord. Amen. So we just need to start focusing, be more conscious of this, would be my suggestion for the first step. Amen? God bless you. Have a good rest of the week and
we'll see you back here Sunday. Let's just expect God to show up and do something miraculous. If you show up, I guarantee you he will. Because you're the only right he's got, praise the Lord. Yes. Okay, baby. <laughs> <laughs>